All right. Thank you for attending this. Uh, today we're going to provide you a very simple analogy that hopefully will help you uh, better drive your teams in the background. So we're going to do this telling you a story. As in all stories, uh, you might relate to some of the events that are depicted here. Purely fictional. Okay. So, once upon a time? Well, once upon a time, there was a very hungry team that wanted to meet a Francis Inge. Uh, so, this is basically their story. You can imagine their reaction when they decided to go for it. So, uh, let's incorporate this in a team's backlog. So, let's look at the seven habits of highly effective people. Uh, if anyone has read this book, you might remember habit number two, which is begin with the end in mind. And it's pretty easy to, to kind of realize where our end or our, where our goal is, which is basically portal. It's where all the good presses are. So, no, no. Uh, how can we actually start incorporating it this into the team's platform? Yeah, so the team started writing the first story, so it has a very hungry group of friends. They wanted to go to Portal, they have the goal, uh, so that they can eat the proper first it. But they went a bit more further, and so they uh, did some acceptance criteria. So eat the best first a man has ever cooked, mm -hmm. and have a full stomach, and being unable to work for the next uh, 30 minutes. Which is what happens, and even 30 minutes is, well, it should be more, yeah. So right now we have our first user story, so go to Portal. So, uh, well, everybody here must have used Google Maps. This will be our PO for the day. And uh, we have our board, a very simple board. So, to do, doing, done. So we have the first story, go to Porto. And we have the direction to go. So what do we have to fit? Yeah, so as Luna said, yeah. we now have like our direction to, towards the goal. And we kind of have an agreed estimation because Google tell us how much time that we're going to get there. So, yeah. <laughs> and but there's also a few other things that we know, uh, which is unexpected stuff can happen, you know, weather, a uh, car can break down. Um, and, you know, we know that we're going to Porto, but we don't know where in Porto we're going to go. And the last thing is distance is really big. So, how can we actually make sure that we're always following the right direction towards our goal? Google Maps has a really neat trick for this, which is breaking things down into smaller, easier, clear chunks that uh, really give you a clear direction towards your next step. So taking this into account, uh, what should we do now? Well, let's do a mouse <laughs> approach. And let's break it down. <laughs> and so that's basically what the team uh, did. So they created new stories. So the same group wanted to drive to A1, if, as we're going from Lisbon, so that they can take the highway. So, new story, drive to A1. But they needed more to, to, to reach Porto. So they need to drive along A1, so they can reach Porto fast and safely. So, second story on the to-do. On the to and then the third one, go from A1 to Porto. What does it, uh, we want to leave A1 and enter Porto, and reach the place where we will it's Still, we don't know where it will be, okay? So, what just happened? We refined our backlog, uh, and basically, as uh, David mentioned, Google gave us simpler directions, so, for the, to, so that we reach what our group wants, this heavy and beautiful Francis <laughs> Inge. Right. So let's talk a bit about the purpose of these stories in the backlog, which is to answer the why and the what. Uh, and for the team, what the team should do is to find the how. And the user stories should not reflect that. Um, so for example, if you choose to drive you know, a Ferrari or a truck, those user stories will still be the same. Uh, what might change is the estimation. So again, why and what on the user stories, the how, that's up to the team to decide how it's going to get to. So let's talk a bit about the how. So we're going to make a like, small analogy between going all together and going in separate cars. So if you go all in the same car, there's a few things that help. Clear communication, because we're all there. We have face-to-face -face conversation. Um, and we have redundancy on the driver level, which means we know what the driver is doing. It means we're replacing with another person. 
and it's very easy to solve dependencies, you know, because we're there and we can contact uh, everyone at the same time. We get the destination together and we have fun together. We hear all the jokes that uh, we uh, mention when we're, we're driving. But there's at least one thing that might not help, which is a sense of lack of speed. So to fit the whole team into the car, uh, we need a bigger car, which might not be so fast. Uh, and you might feel that we could go faster. What if you go into two different cars? Um, one of the cars can be super fast, so at least you're going to get somewhere fast at least part of the team. And you might have rhythms on the car level, because if one breaks down, at least part of the team will make it to the destination. But there might not be such a clear way of communicating because people are in two different cars um, and they're not talking face to face and that, that, that is always an issue. Uh, cars can have different ranges and autonomies and even different speeds. Um, so there's a bit of more coordination that you might need there, which can lead to not getting there at the same time. Uh, but wait a second, David. We don't need to prescribe any solution. Yeah. So the goal of these two slides is just whatever you're heading as a team, just uh, try to push things in on and see different directions and then choose as a team the best one. So again, the how should be on, on the team. So uh, then again, why should you always uh, think about different approaches and question them? Because right now we're, we're following sort of blindly what Google says and sometimes it's not the best way uh, to reach from point A to point, to point B. So, David, can you help me out a bit on how can we uh, yeah, do this so, better? Yeah, so just like in Google Maps, sometimes we know the way, so we're like, ah, it's telling me to turn right, but I'm going to turn left because I know that the path through here, and I prefer to go through there. The team should constantly be judging the, their direction uh, and reevaluating it based on, um, on what you already know, your knowledge, and based on the past, past events that have occurred and on feedback that you get. So in order to do that, you can do some refining on your backlog. We have different techniques like the ones we have here. Um, not all of them work for all the teams. Some do, some don't. Read about them, learn about them, try them out, and then decide on which ones uh, work for your team. But do this constantly uh, because it's really important to uh, get better uh, direction to your web. So speaking of refining the backlog, remember that I told you that in Porto we don't didn't really know where we'd get the Francesini in Porto. Um, so how can we actually go there with our team? Yeah, so basically, as we mentioned, the team doesn't know where to eat the best Francesini man has ever cooked. So the team is going to do a spike, and the new story is generated. So where is the best Francesini in Porto? And this is very subjective, okay? <laughs> uh, still for this couple of, of guys, uh, what, they, what they found out on the spot that they're doing is that the, the best Francesinha is at Café Santiago, okay? So basically the spike will be moved to Dan, and when they reach Porto, they will have their final destination right now. But the important is, uh, while you're driving along the way, is just think of the backlog as a moving target, okay? Because uh, you always must be prepared not only to question the, the way moving forward and uh, be prepared for uh, expect the unexpected. And uh, speaking of unexpected, uh, David, what did happen to the team? Yeah, so the team was uh, passing along Santa and they noticed something was not right they started to get hungry. And we're still like two hours away from work. And then they realized that, you know, they left at 11 in the morning. And like, yeah, we should have planned for lunch. So something unexpected happened. Uh, so what did the team decide? They decided that they wanted to go to Sudan to have lunch. And when you do that in Google Maps, it's really easy to just add a waypoint and it just redirects you there. So taking this into account, no, no. <coughs> How can we reflect it in our backlog? Yep, so we need to reflect this in, in the backlog. So basically, uh, they need to go to Sertan while they're driving in uh, A1 is still doing, but they need to drive back to A1. So a new story is reflected uh, on the backlog. And now, as we mentioned, the spike is already done. But uh, in order for us to do this, uh, David, what, what does good looks like in terms of a user story? Yeah, so the user story should be as clear and simple as possible uh, so that there's no ambiguity in them. 
And it's really for everyone in the team to be to understand the why and the what and really create a understanding on that. And as a good rule of thumb, you should try to write your stories in a way that someone from outside the team that doesn't have much context actually understands the why and the what. So if they do, success, you have a really good user story. So uh, when people read instructions and uh, we're always facing sometimes big chunks of documents and everything and they tend to interpret them differently even with a smaller user story that's why we should uh, talk and involve all the stakeholders in the discussions we we have because this kind of things happen uh, and this is document this is the KRX book and you can see that uh, the message sometimes the message doesn't pass uh, correctly uh, as in this case the nuts allergy and uh, in this better one that should have nothing uh, so this is this is uh, this is a problem that happens with communication a lot so that's why the they should be written and still you should talk and the drawings whatever it works for everybody on the team that needs to, to be involved on that to have to be on the same uh, path but it's not only about uh, communication, the bit. Yeah, so it's also good estimation. So if you do it, there are three variables that you should take into account. And those are effort, uh, complexity, and risk. So think that, like, as an example, just to make you understand the three different uh, variables. If you need to manually change a thousand files and add a number, and you cannot automate it for whatever reason, um, it doesn't require, uh, it requires a lot of effort. Uh, because you have to open the file, add the number, set the file, close the file. Um, it doesn't have a lot of complexity because it's pretty straightforward and easy to do that. And it involves some risk because it's um, hum you're prone to human errors. Um, so hopefully you got a bit of a glimpse on uh, what effort complexity and risk mean. Uh, but also do take into account that research says that human mind is really crappy at estimating in hours. But it's really good at comparing things. So look at your previous data, your previous stories, and really try to establish a parallel and compare them when you're doing estimation. So the team reached their destination. This is Café Santiago in Porto, and as you can see, all the cards are on the board, and they're, they're ready to eat. Yeah, and the team had lots of fun, but uh, there are consequences. So this is the team before the Francis Inge, and the team members. <laughs> After Francis Inge. Okay, so be careful when you eat it. You grew up, right? Just one thing that the team uh, learned uh, is uh, when they arrived at Cafe Santiago, a lot of people don't, learn, don't know the history behind Francis Inge. So, David, can you help us out uh, just sharing what the team uh, learned? Yeah, so the direct translation of Francis Inge to English is Little French Girl. Um, and that's exactly what it means in Portuguese as well. So they were curious about it and they asked one of the waiters and they said, oh, this guy, this guy called Daniel, uh, he lived in France and then he came back to Portugal in the 50s and there's a sandwich in France that is very known, the Croque Monsieur, and he used that but he adapted it to the taste and the palate of people in Porto and created this like awesome sauce that is basically the soul of Francesinha and that's why it got uh, the name Little French Girl or Francesinha. <laughs> So, and, and uh, interesting, uh, last week uh, this came up on our Facebook feed, so uh, New in Town NYT, uh, they put, put a, a voting on their side and uh, more than 15,000 people voted and apparently our choice came in third, so we have to try out these two to see if they deserve the, the, the other two places at the podium. So just a quick recap of, of, of the lessons learned uh, during the, the, this process is uh, always have the end goal in mind. So although they had they faced unexpected uh, stuff along the way, they never forgot that their goal was to have their full stomach and eat a, a proper Francis in it. Right, and just like Google does, break things down into smaller, simpler things to achieve your goal. So just like you start with a really yeah. tiny car, you end up with a really nice yeah. Lego truck. So, and the how, as we always mention, it's for the team. So it's it should be always a uh, team decision, and the why, the, and the what for the user stories and the backlog. Right, and treat your backlog as a moving target. So you're going to learn so much along the way. There's going to be so many unknowns, good and bad ones. Uh, then you need to incorporate this and all the feedback that you get from your stakeholders. <coughs> Uh, into your backlog, so please do keep refining it. 
and the <laughs> shift happened. So we can say that they were not prepared. They didn't thought about lunch, so they left late. And that can always happen in, in any team, not, uh, for, not for the lunch, but always be prepared for changes. Right, and to keep your user stories uh, really simple and clear, so there's no ambiguity and no weird messages like we saw in the dates and weird interpretations. So you can use a 3C's memory card conversation confirmation for that, as an example. And uh, this, is, this is basically how we did it. So it's a bit of the making of. Uh, we sat in, a, in one room for one hour and we did the user journey around the, the talk and uh, we moved this into Trello. Uh, so this was the travel, uh, at least in half of the way yeah. of the of the of the talk, uh, and so we don't mean to preach, but this is basically how we work, and you guys know it. Uh. Right. So as some of you might know, we are organizers of the Agile Connect Lisbon meetups. Uh, we're trying to create this community in which we all learn with each other about Agile. We do meetups once a month. They're completely free and we varied the location in Lisbon. Please uh, add yourselves to this group. Next uh, week here in the office. Yeah, next week it will be here, downstairs on the 11th floor. Uh, we always have we've usually really good speakers and different activities. We have some games and workshops as well. We've given out prizes to you sometimes. It's Wednesday after the event. It's Wednesday after the event. It's Wednesday after the event. It wasn't a place it was a good Thank you. Thank you. Gotcha. Just double check. Good, good cure. Right. Yeah, yeah. Just to check if you're paying attention. Uh, all right, so please add yourselves and join us. Uh, usually there are very fun sessions. Uh, and you get to meet quite a bunch of nice people there. Yeah, in this right. part, we don't think to do it. You yeah. guys <laughs> know us. You already know us. <laughs> do we? Do we? Yeah. Yeah. So, any questions? <laughs>